This beach is a fucking death trap. Get us the f out of here! Welcome to the Friend Review. We like to point a lot. Mm -hmm. This episode, we're reviewing Dunkirk. The newest fucking Christopher Nolan writing and directing picture deal. Christopher it's, Nolan. It's the newest Dark Knight movie. About World War II. About when he's in the time he was in World War II. We'll be back here with our reviews shortly. With our, not reviews, with our final thoughts. Where's the trigger? Dunkirk, written and directed by Christopher Nolan, starring Tom Hardy and a bunch of other Brits. Is it safe? Oh, thank God. Okay, so Dunkirk is a movie, like, as the title would suggest, about the location of Dunkirk, where during World War II, there was a mass exodus of British soldiers that needed to be saved, but uh, British boats couldn't be, or British military boats couldn't be used because they wanted to save them for a later battle. So then civilians stepped up and came across the channel and saved hundreds of thousands, I think like 300 or 400, 400 British, 400,000 British, British, British soldiers. British soldiers were saved during that event, so it was just fantastic. Overall, I like this movie. I'm not sure what I was really expecting going in. The trailers were pretty vague, open to interpretation. But I will say that it felt really long, even though it was only about an hour and a half. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't like it or that it was, uh, it was the pacing was off. It was just, it was really heavy subject matter, I think. And it just felt, because there wasn't very much dialogue, it felt like it dragged on a little bit, but I think it redeemed, ultimately the story redeemed itself in the end. The, I thought the little monologue at the end, little speech kind of framed things really nicely. This movie is really weird. I don't want to say I don't like it, but I also don't want to say I like it. It's, it's kind of in this weird mid-ground. Um, in classic Christopher Nolan fashion, it's a really beautiful movie. Uh, the, the cinematography, the, the, the compositions, uh, the coloring, all of that is, is gorgeous like you'd expect from any other Christopher Nolan movie. Um, but what's really weird is the characterization, uh, the editing, and just sort of the way the plot was put together. First thing I'm gonna to touch on, cinematography. I thought the cinematography was absolutely gorgeous. Felt very much like a camera had just been sent back in time and we were seeing scenes from this actual historical event on top of them just being very well composed. So that's a definitely a big positive that I found for this movie. Uh, second thing, I think that the acting was, was good. Um, not a whole lot of dialogue, like maybe like 200 or 300 lines of dialogue in like the whole movie, but acting was good, it's serviceable. I definitely bought that they were terrified and there was, they were fear fearing for their lives and it was war and I totally bought all that. So this isn't a movie that has a classical narrative structure. There is no main character. Uh, there's no group of main characters, none of that. It feels very much like sort of a series of vignettes that kind of show you what was going on during when 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 Dunkirk, what was happening to everybody, how everybody was feeling. Uh, so you get behind the wheel of a boat with a, a civilian captain who comes to save people. Uh, you're in a plane with Tom Hardy as he's trying to manage his fuel running out, but also feels the responsibility of saving people on the beach. Um, and then, of course, you're on the beach with some of the sol soldiers, sol soldiers, sol soldiers as they're trying to escape and trying to figure out different ways that they can get off the beach and get home to safety. I don't remember a single person's name in this movie, or any of the characters' names, I should say. Uh, I remember the deeds they did, though, which is, if that makes any sense. Like, this movie exemplifies singular acts of bravery by different people. And in that, I think it was very strong because like, I really, this movie left me with a feeling of like faith and hope in humanity in general. Like it really reminded you that when push comes to shove, people can be brave and then, and they can try and they can uh, sacrifice to help their uh, fellow man, which I thought was really awesome. Final thing, I definitely think that the sound mixing stood out as a big negative, I guess. 
just because it, there were explosions where the sound was definitely off from what you see on the screen. And there were pieces of the dialogue, especially when they're in the water, in a couple points when they're on the water on the, on the sailboat, where the dialogue was really tough to, to understand. And I'm just with his, no, Christopher Nolan's kind of, with his track record, his team's track record anyways, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, if it was the sound mixing and wasn't just like an error in the theater, it definitely was just poor sound mixing. So, didn't ruin the movie for me, but it was definitely, uh, definitely an issue. Especially when you look at a movie like Fury Road, or Fury rather, not Fury Road. Um, when you look at a movie like Fury, where the sound mixing is so excellent, and really aids in your being lost in that feeling of feeling like you're in the middle of the battle. And this movie just didn't achieve that at all. And it was just kind of disappointing on the sound mixing front. I want to talk about the editing. It didn't really work for me. Like scene for scene, the editing was fine. Like it was it was done very well. There's a lot of, the movie is very, very tense and it, and it kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time. But the way certain scenes followed other certain scenes was weird. They would show you uh, an event from one perspective, and then the following scene, or sometimes not even the following scene, maybe two or three scenes later, they would show you the same event from a different perspective. But it took you a while to clue in to the fact that you were seeing the same event again, which was kind of weird. So it's like sometimes the scene would be over and you'd be like, Oh fuck, that was a scene from earlier in the movie, just from like the pilot's perspective as opposed to the captain's perspective. Which is cool if you kind of leave clues and you make it more evident. It, it felt kind of messy to me. I, I wasn't always on the same page as to where in the timeline of the movie I was, or who I was following, or if I was seeing the same event again, or if it was a different event. Uh, so that was kind of weird and, and I think that's worth mentioning. And we're back. So Dunkirk, mm. overall, I mean, pretty like, it was good, but it was like pretty like meh for me. Like, I feel like watching it again, I, I would have a different opinion. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, I'd like, I would know what I'm getting into, I think a little bit more. It'd but. probably be more, cause that was, that was one thing about the movie sitting there. It, you were never like, you were never sure of like, you were like, this movie could go on for another hour. Like you had no idea. Well, it, that's one thing to say. It, it felt, felt like a super long. It felt like a two and a half hour movie and it was maybe an hour. Hour and a half, like yeah. So yeah. that that is one thing going into it. Like it feels fucking long, probably just because of the way it's put together. It, and the, the total lack of dialogue, I yeah. think also really makes it feel, because you're, you're a lot of time you're waiting for like someone to say something or something mm -hmm. to happen. And it's just very minimal dialogue. So like, I have no overwhelming desire to see the movie again, but it's like, I don't, I didn't have a bad time in the theater. Like, I wouldn't say that. Nope. I didn't, I didn't want to like leave or anything. Like I had no desire to leave. No, no, yeah, same here. But it's, it's a very odd movie. Like if somebody was to come up to me and was like, hey, what movie should I see this weekend? I don't know if I'd be like, yeah, you should go see Dunkirk for sure. Like I, that, no, I, feel I would like, definitely say Planet of the Apes over Dunkirk. Yeah, like if you're, if you're gonna see a movie like right away, Planet of the Apes and Spider-Man yeah, are still Spider-Man, Planet of the Apes, yeah, Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Right. So those uh, those other two movies. I think if you're really into World War II, uh, yeah, like this this is gonna be the new like when Saving Private Ryan came out, it was like send home releases so we can watch this in class because it's a yeah. really good World War II movie. This is the new one that like I think it's literally gonna be a something that like most history classes watch mm -hmm. because Dunkirk is an incredibly significant event and a big turning point in World War II, especially with in terms of morale. And even though they were like sent back, it was like a kind of like a morale boost almost mm -hmm. for, for everyone. And how Churchill handled it was very important to the war effort. So I think from like, if you're a history buff, like I sort of am, you will really, really enjoy it. And you should go see it just because I think it, more than anything, I think it gives an experience of you were at Dunkirk. The and tone like, is like spot on. Like it, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 tone and I feel like the feeling that they were trying to uh, go for. I think yeah. they nailed that. And like the, and that and the perspective. Like you yeah. felt like you were seeing this from the pilot and the, the pilots and like kind of the civilian, but more so like the soldiers' perspective. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I, I like saying it, it could be shown in history classes. Like, there's not really any swearing in that movie. It's not, not bloody. Nope. It's not. There's no tits or none of that good stuff. Um, it's it's a little heavy in a couple of parts, but mostly not. But no more than Saving Private yeah. Ryan or well, like Saving Private like Ryan is fucking like gore. Yeah, and they show that movie in history yeah. classes. So. Um, so yeah, I fuck. This is tough for me. Should, I, should should they see it in theaters? Yes or no? I, I don't think you'd see it in theaters. Wait for your local history teacher to get her on Blu-ray and watch her in history class, all you yeah. fucking young, bright-eyed high school kids and that fucking us, yeah. university kids. All you that follow us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give this one a solid, like, four tiers out of seven bacons. Yeah, four, just because, like, it was good, but it just it really didn't impress me in any way. And it's probably, it was like, just kind of, like, middle of the road for me. A week, the weakest modern... Nolan film for sure like since at least like, like uh, you don't agree with me but I really liked Interstellar a lot yeah but I mean like so, even before that like I mean I'd say Dark Knight Rises was probably like maybe the weakest before this one before that yeah but but uh, for different reasons but going back to fucking Memento it's probably the weakest one since Memento Really it's like, probably his weakest I really, movie. I really like Memento. No, no, but I'm saying yeah. like going back all the way to the yeah. beginning of his movies. It's yeah. like it's probably the weakest out of oh, right. all since, of them. Oh, right. Since all of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But still a great movie. Still not great. Still a good movie that is worth watching at some point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Like you should watch it because it's like, especially just, just for the historical significance, I would say watch it. Just don't give them your fucking $15. Yeah. Dollars. Don't give them your money. But it was good. Yeah. Enough to spend time on. Mm. I didn't feel like I wasted. <laughs> you wasted time, yeah. Wasted, wasted time. Yeah, okay. All it's right. like King Arthur, like where I felt like I don't want it. Like, First 10 minutes, King Arthur's hot shit, but yeah, yeah. overall, yeah. wasted time. Um, all right, uh, Will, thanks for watching. Uh, I think our next review is Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man and then Planet of the Apes. Which we actually saw a while ago, but we're just getting around to do We're doing three reviews in a row, which is why we're in the same clothes in yeah. all three of these. Yeah. Uh, might, might, might as well mention that. Or we're that. just dirty fucks. Or we're like, dirty. We ain't, yeah. we, ain't we ain't change for a I, while. I only have three shirts and two pairs of shorts. So. We stink and go fuck yourself if you don't like it. <laughs>